Nex as a fully integrated mining and logistics provider with our own haulage fleet are really looking forward to investigating the opportunity of restarting production at Shine. Fantastic, game-changing transaction for Phoenix. Welcome to today's webinar with Benex Resources. I'm Danica Warburton and I'm delighted to be joined by Chairman John Wellborn, who's going to walk us through the game-changing announcement today pertaining to the acquisition of Mount Gibson's iron ore and port assets in the Midwest. John is going to walk you through the announcement and then we're going to open it up to a Q&A. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand over to you, John. Thanks a lot, Danica. And you're correct, it really is a game changer for Phoenix this morning. We're really excited to announce that we've, uh, we're in the process of acquiring Mount Gibson's Midwest iron ore port and rail assets. Uh, these are substantial assets. It's a big expansion of Phoenix's business. And uh, we, we, uh, we like to think at Phoenix that we're a very successful Midwest iron ore miner. Uh, on Tuesday this week, we announced the uh, achievement of our three millionth tonne uh, in less than three years. Uh, a great startup story, very profitable production from Iron Ridge. Uh, and we're continuing in the legacy of Mount Gibson, who have successfully mined more than 50 million tonnes of iron ore since 2004, uh, but don't currently have any operations. And so uh, the ability to secure a large resource base at the Shine Iron Ore Mine to it's very significantly larger on-wharf storage sheds at the Port of Geraldton to augment our existing shed there, uh, as well as rail access points and, and other sundry mining-related assets at Extension Hill uh, and other places in the Midwest is a fantastic game-changing transaction for Phoenix. The, the Shine Iron Ore Mine was acquired by Mount Gibson for $15 million and a royalty in 2014. They commissioned that mine in 2001 as a 1.5 million tonne per annum mine, so similar scale to Iron Ridge, and uh, then suspended operations there following a fall in the iron ore price and the challenges they were facing with uh, haulage complications. So Phoenix, as a fully integrated uh, mining and logistics provider with our own haulage fleet, are really looking forward to investigating the opportunity of restarting production at Shine. And we've also identified in the uh, announcement that given the very high grade nature of uh, Iron Ridge, we're currently producing a 64% high quality lump product and a 63% fines product, uh, matching that with the 15 million tonnes of resources at uh, Shine uh, at 58% provides a really obvious opportunity for us to investigate of blending those all bodies together to create uh, premium Phoenix products. The resource base at uh, Shine is substantial. It consists of 10 million, roughly 10 million tonnes uh, of hematite and 10 million tonnes of high-grade magnetite. Uh, and uh, it's uh, fully permitted. It uh, uh, Obviously, heritage and mining approvals have all been in place when Mount Gibson started. Uh, so it represents a shovel-ready project uh, as a second potential producing asset for Phoenix. Uh, the other significant uh, elements of today's announcement are the impact it has on our potential to expand our existing production at Iron Ridge uh, and also the opportunity we see uh, to provide third party logistics for the many projects and exciting developments that are taking place in the Midwest. Uh, the Western Australian Government had announced a more than $300 million budget allocation uh, to upgrade the facilities at the Geraldton Port. Uh, and that's around the uh, known growth, uh, not just in iron ore potential in the Midwest, but obviously other bulk commodities, uh, lithium, uh, and that explosion of demand, uh, and bulk mineral concentrates of other natures, potash, uh, vanadium, titanium, there's all sorts of projects in the Midwest. And they're all looking to get their product to port and then store it at the port and then ship it from the port. Uh, and so the expansion of our storage facilities from 80,000 tonnes to more than 400,000 tonnes uh, and the operation of three sheds gives us a significant opportunity to increase our own volumes, increase uh, third party iron ore volumes and also look to diversify into logistics provision for other commodities. Uh, and that's really exciting. We're looking forward to it. It's immediately uh, cash flow accretive 
uh, to Phoenix because of the savings we're going to generate uh, from the port efficiencies. We already operate a very efficient haulage and, and port operation. Uh, but from time to time, our haulage efficiencies are impacted by the shed capacity at Geraldton, uh, and that's going to unlock some value as well as the new arrangements we've made with the Midwest Port Authority, leading to an immediate cost saving for our existing operations. All of that's good, and uh, I, uh, Danica, with you and elsewhere in, in all of our announcements have been talking about the growth potential for Phoenix uh, for a long time. We, we continue to investigate other exciting opportunities but, but today, this is a real game changer for Phoenix. Uh, it leads us towards a really growth opportunity. We're obviously got a very strong balance sheet. Uh, and um, this opportunity uh, is the first step in what I think is going to be a very exciting growth uh, opportunity. Uh, and I look forward, I've had some really positive feedback from shareholders and other interested market participants this morning uh, and interested in any questions we've received on the webinar. Brilliant. Thanks, John. Well, we have received quite a few questions that have come through. So thanks to everyone who emailed and, and um, put them in the uh, Zoom registration box. Um, I wanted to, obviously, this is a fantastic announcement for Fenex and uh, cements your position as a dominant and fully integrated um, mine to logistics provider. In terms of each of the individual assets that you're acquiring, if we start with Shine, what's your plan for re recommencing mining operations there? Do you have a rough timeline for that? We don't have a timeline at the moment, and uh, there are some complexities with unlocking the potential value we've described in blending uh, in relation to our existing offtake agreements. There is a, a, an existing royalty with the Shine Iron Ore Mine with the previous owner, Jim Dalby. Uh, and obviously, although it was recently in operation uh, by Mount Gibson, uh, and it's been on a very comprehensive and effective care and maintenance program, and our due diligence activities would indicate that the restart is, is not complex, we'll take some time to plan exactly how and at what scale we're going to restart those operations. So. The uh, okay. approval pathway is quite straightforward and it's a fully operational mine ready to go, uh, but we haven't actually indicated and nor are we yet certain as to exactly how and when we'll restart those operations. They're obviously dependent on price and, and particularly uh, how uh, efficiently we think we can uh, advance a blending opportunity. And um, in terms of the, the port and logistics, I've got a question here from Josh around, in your mind, is that the most significant part of this acquisition, the, uh, the Geraldton Port assets? We're an iron ore miner. And so I, I find, you know, expanding our iron ore interests uh, is something we have to do. You know, we've, we've been extraordinarily successful with the fantastic ore body at Iron Ridge. Uh, as at last year, we had just over 8 million tonnes of resources and we're mining those at 1.3 million tonnes per annum. So we've got a good four or five years in front of us, um, but we know we could mine it at a faster rate uh, and we know that we can be efficient uh, and make money during the iron ore price cycle. Uh, so we're looking around for more of that material and that's a really exciting part of today's announcement. But you know, when, when, we acquire, when we set up the joint venture with Newhall to create a, a bulk haulage company, um, we, we did that, and, and particularly with Craig Mitchell's expertise, with a view to creating something really special, a world-class, leading, safe, really efficient method of hauling bulk commodities long distances. And, and we've demonstrated that, and that represents something that I think can unlock enormous value uh, for Phoenix owned projects and other third parties in the Midwest. Uh, and obviously haulage is only one part of the puzzle. So I do think that people who see our expansion of port infrastructure as a really significant part of today's announcement are on the right track. Because with the Phoenix new haul capacity that's now fully 100% owned by Phoenix uh, and uh, significant capacity at the Geraldton port in an environment where the port itself is looking to increase the throughput of bulk tonnages by more than 10 million tonnes per year. Uh, we see a great opportunity to be a part of that. We want to be part of it with our own iron ore, but there's massive value, massive profits for Phoenix to be generated by capturing as much of that additional 10 million tonnes of throughput per annum as we possibly can from a logistics, from a haulage point of view, from the entire Midwest channeling into Geraldton port and then storing and accessing the fantastic high quality war facilities that the port has. Uh, that's, a, that's a big future value generator for us and we're, we're obviously excited about it. Um, and, you know, I'm sure 
there are questions about the significance of the rail access. Uh, if you think about all of the projects and all of that tonnage, there, there are two ways to get material into the port that then exits on, on the vessels that come in and out. Uh, and that's road haulage or rail. And I mentioned earlier, Mount Gibson's success in the Midwest with more than 50 million tonnes. Uh, the vast majority of that was, was railed into the port of Geraldton. Uh, and a key part of that was the access points and the sidings at Riverdini and Perinjury. Uh, so we see those as important. Uh, they're not part of our immediate plans because we're a road hauler. Uh, but when you get to really significant tonnages, uh, then rail becomes a very viable opportunity. And when it is, you need to have access. So it's, it's great optionality for the future. Okay. And you touched on this, but what are your plans with regard to uh, becoming a third party provider uh, of logistics solutions well, in the Midwest? Look when this transaction settles, we'll immediately become a third party provider because Mount Gibson have been providing services to uh, other iron ore producers in the Midwest, storage uh, and loading charges. Uh, and so we'll inherit those obligations and we're looking to rapidly expand them. And uh, we've already started uh, discussions uh, this morning with many of those operators who we're already in contact with looking at haulage opportunities. Uh, and there are a number of tenders that are currently open for haulage opportunities that Phoenix New Hall is exploring. So uh, we're immediately looking at that potential. Um, we uh, are confident that that won't distract us from the focus needed to continue the success of Iron Ridge and our mining and haulage and port operations there uh, are independent of that third party uh, business opportunity. And how did the uh, Extension Hill assets tie in to your what you're doing? They're, they're, they're obviously part of a package of, of assets that Mount Gibson um, uh, was looking to divest. There's a very large scale, high quality crushing and screening plant there that, that we will own uh, when we can uh, settle on that transaction, as well as a really good 138 man mining camp. So uh, we ourselves don't have any uh, immediate plans to have, conduct any mining activity, nor do we have any mining rights uh, at Extension Hill or nearby. Uh, so they're assets that we think are high value. Uh, we might uh, relocate those for our own benefit, uh, but we'll also be talking to some of the key stakeholders in that region about uh, their possible use of those assets. Okay, so you've, you've walked us through the, the benefits being that the transaction is immediately cash flow accretive. Uh, you've added to your iron ore resources and you've got the potential for production growth there. Uh, the 400% storage um, capacity increase at the Geraldton Port. But I guess the question on uh, everyone or every shareholder's uh, minds today is how will this transaction affect their dividend? Look, we we've, we've, we've have a very generous dividend policy. It was put in place when we, the company was entirely focused on getting uh, Iron Ridge up and running and being profitable. And so that policy was put in place uh, a while ago and it dictates that we will pay between 50 and 80% uh, of our uh, earnings uh, in an annual dividend or a semi-annual dividend uh, subject to franking credits and obviously subject to the, the conditions of the company at the time. Uh, but we've also been communicating consistently around the opportunity we see for growth. and. You know, in my discussions with shareholders, there's a lot of shareholders who obviously are very much enjoying what has been a hugely high yielding dividend. Uh, and we, 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 we are all about shareholder returns. And so the two obvious ways to uh, enrich our shareholders is to continue to pay them a fully frank dividend. Uh, and the other one, and the, the one that today's announcement really speaks to is those shareholders who are looking for capital growth in their investment. and. Uh, uh, you know, the, the share price of Phoenix has traded sideways over a period of time where we've been performing really well. And I think that's an indicator of the volatility in the iron ore price uh, and the perception that we didn't have uh, a, a long mine life or that we uh, perhaps might not be successful in uh, our growth opportunities. So uh, we are committed to growth. Uh, we haven't changed the dividend policy. But I would say to uh, people who are asking what the dividend will be, and about this time of year, we start to receive a lot of questions. Uh, the board will sit down and evaluate the dividend after we've got an idea on our full year audited numbers, uh, and we'll consider the dividend policy at that stage. And I expect that we'll have a lot um, better clarity at that point about our investment in the budget for the next financial year in our growth transactions. And we, we've got a very strong balance sheet. We're going to end the year with a lot of cash. 
uh, and we'll look at how best to deploy that in terms of growth opportunities to lead to value creation uh, and uh, how that matches with our dividend policy. So, look, that's a long answer. The, the shorter one is uh, we haven't declared a dividend yet and we'll do that when we look at the full year numbers and balance it with the investment required in growth. Okay. And um, you mentioned that the announcement on Tuesday uh, that you'd sold and, and shipped 3 million tonnes of high-grade iron ore from the Iron Ridge uh, mine at a, a really great margin. Um, Wesley's actually asked, do you expect the likely forecast shipment tonnes to maintain that same margin once you combined everything That's in the future? a question from Wesley. Uh, you know, as a, as a miner, I've always shied away from forecasting the commodity price. Uh, <laughs> because I'm the last person to ask about what I think the iron ore price is, is going to be. It's the one thing in our business we can't control. Uh, we have a very strong focus on reducing our cost. And uh, we also try and uh, protect our pricing uh, with what has been a very efficient hedging model for, for Phoenix. Uh, and so we have a, a strong hedge position at above $170 a tonne out to December of this year. And you mentioned the 3 million tonne milestone. I think everyone at Phoenix should be really proud that we've continued to average an operating margin of more than 50 Australian dollars for every tonne that we've mined, hauled and shipped from Geraldton. And if you look at the iron ore prices over the two and a half years that we've been in production, uh, that's a really obvious demonstration that we've been successful in bringing down our costs. The most obvious way we've done that is the consolidation of our Phoenix New Hall business and the continued efficiency of what is our highest cost centre, which is haulage. Uh, this announcement today will lead to gains of similar uh, cost saving efficiencies within our port operations and as well a can, a, an additional gain in, in haulage efficiency, uh, which is important. Uh, and so you know, that uh, we will do our best to lower our costs. Now, whether that improves our margin depends on what happens to the iron ore price. Um, but you know, we uh, we if you think about that hedged price, uh, we're getting a really good margin out of uh, that material. We'll always look to continue that uh, subject to the volatility in the iron ore price. And uh, Rob's asked, I guess, on the uh, the next steps in the growth um, plan. What what are the timelines to completion of the uh, conditions precedent to the transaction? Good question, Rob. Uh, we've been working really efficiently with the Mount Gibson team. We've obviously signed the share purchase agreement that gives effect to this transaction. Now we have to work on the transfer of those assets. Uh, it's expected to occur during the mo most of those assets and the key ones, particularly the board assets, are expected to complete during July. Okay, great. Um, I thought quickly we might be able to share a few images of the assets that you're acquiring and you might be able to just walk people through the sort of key points. Oh, yeah, so there's Iron Ridge, 500 k's from Geraldton uh, to the north of Kew. And you can see X marks the spot on the Shine Iron Ore Mine, which is south of Yalgu, a little bit closer to Geraldton, and obviously uh, a lot closer to the rail infrastructure. Uh, and then the rail sidings, uh, one to the north of Riverdini, one to the south of Peringiri, uh, and the uh, assets we've acquired sitting at the Extension Hill project uh, uh, for Mount Gibson, and, and then uh, connecting to Geraldton. So that's our new picture in the Midwest. Uh, this is the shine open pit on the left. You can see the uh, ore body in the darker patch there in the middle. And this is, as I mentioned, uh, was commissioned by Mount Gibson as a 1.5 million tonne per annum project in uh, 2021 and uh, currently on care and maintenance. It's in great condition. Uh, that's a photo on the right of the uh, layout area of the mine, um, I think from 2021. And uh, Mount Gibson have done a great job in keeping it uh, ready to restart operations. Mm -hmm. And do you have any uh, view on the capital required to um, restart operations as yet? It's not, it's not going to, I think we think it's going to be uh, a similar number to what we uh, were successful in doing at Iron Ridge, uh, but that's part of our investigation uh, is to looking exactly how we would do that. We'll look to operate it slightly differently to what Mount Gibson operated it in and we'll look for efficiencies on that. Uh, so there's the romp pad and lay down area for, for the Shine Iron Ore Mine, nice part of the Midwest, uh, obviously a great place to mine, flat, stable, lots of easy access, access to infrastructure. Oh, there's the port. Now, this is interesting. So uh, the, the three sheds that we've acquired, immediately in the corner there to the left is Shed 5, uh, which is sitting alongside the... Uh, 
fishing boat harbour. Uh, and then shed 13 is the smaller looking one, which is immediately next to the boat you can see on berth four. Uh, and shed four is the larger shed next to that. So, so we've got those yeah, three exactly. storage sheds. They're currently dedicated to iron ore. Um, we're um, committed to the port to allocate one of those to uh, clean products, so perhaps um, uh, spodumene concentrate, talc or garnet and other things. Uh, and the other two large sheds have, uh, you know, a significant throughput capacity in iron ore. It's quite exciting. Um, there's the crushing and screening plant on the left, which is uh, sitting out at Extension Hill, also in care and maintenance. And on the right is a picture of uh, shed five. It's a very large bit of infrastructure. Uh, if you're looking for a reference point that I'm familiar with, you can uh, fit two rugby fields inside this shed uh, and you could actually, the, the height of it, you could actually play a game of rugby inside it. So it's a, it's a really massive uh, piece of infrastructure in really good condition. This is the 138 bed mining camp uh, at Extension Hill. Um, uh, nice tennis court you can see there, Danica. Really yeah. <laughs> a uh, purpose-built and fit-for-purpose uh, mining camp and all the related mm -hmm. uh, catering and uh, gymnasium yeah. and, uh, access infrastructure. That's basically it on the on the new assets that you're buying, but thank you for sure. walking us through what those images are all about. Um, so uh, I guess in terms of um, the other shareholder questions that came through, you answered the question on dividends, oh. which everyone wanted to know, but I guess the other thing was on your other exploration and, and growth plans and, and that sort of thing. Do you have any other updates that you can share with us or any other growth plans? We, uh, look, we, we are interested and there's lots of opportunities in the Midwest. Um, we're keen to look at further opportunities. We've been working with Matt Gibson for, for, for a while on this transaction and obviously we're, we're very clean uh, to have announced it and now we're going to be focused on um, uh, settling that transaction and incorporating those assets. Uh, but we we are interested in further opportunities, uh, and and we will look at them as and when they arrive, and and uh, we'll update the market when there's something material uh, that that needs disclosure. But to be clear, our, our message hasn't changed. It's been the same for more than a year now. Uh, when I joined the company, we we conducted a, a, a very effective strategic review as to where we thought the key opportunities were for Phoenix, uh, and we've been steadily and. Uh, uh, responsibly progressing along that growth strategy and uh, I look forward to updating the market in due course uh, when we can on what else we, uh, we can achieve. There are lots of interesting assets in the Midwest and we're keen to talk to people uh, about mm -hmm. uh, mining opportunities for Phoenix uh, as well as assisting people in the solutions they need to get important uh, products to market. Yeah, okay. And we received a couple of questions on the uh, critical pathway items and timelines. So as you said, that will be communicated to everybody in a market announcement uh, coming up in due course when you, in a, in a few weeks or something yeah, look, like we that. Accept, we, we, we expect um, you know, settlement on, on the, most of the assets we're acquiring to occur during July. And obviously we'll announce when that occurs and we're looking forward to getting um, going on, on the opportunities. Okay, fantastic. So any questions that uh, we didn't get to, we'll just email you directly. John, just before we um, sign off, is there any final comments that you'd like to leave investors and shareholders with today? Yeah, look, I'd, I'd really like to welcome Mount Gibson to the Phoenix Register. Uh, I think it's really significant that they uh, ha have chosen to take most of the consideration for these really highly valuable assets uh, as shares in Phoenix. Um, and, and options, which um, obviously uh, we're keen for them to exercise. Um, I think they'll be around an 8 or 9% shareholder when we settle on the deal. And if they exercise those options, they'll go uh, just over 10% and have the right to appoint a director to the board. Uh, and I think that's a real endorsement of Phoenix. Mm. Uh, you know, Mount Gibson have been uh, probably the most successful iron ore over the last 20 years in the Midwest. Uh, they, they have, you know, invested hundreds of millions of dollars in mining uh, assets in the Midwest. And we're really excited uh, to have acquired key bits of that infrastructure that we're confident Phoenix can continue a very successful and very profitable legacy with. Uh, and um, really pleased to, to have them on board as a shareholder. And to all the other shareholders out there, uh, I think it's a really exciting time. And uh, stay tuned for, for further news as and when we deliver it. Thanks very much, Dan. Thanks, John. Thanks for your time. And thank you to everyone who uh, joined the call today.